What's up, sons? It's Blind Rod with Son of a Tech. Once again, today I have another mining video for you. Today we're going to be taking a look at the RX 5700 XT's mining performance, everybody's favorite GPU for mining, at least since you aren't able to get as many 5700s anymore as they've been discontinued. Uh, part of the reason they've been discontinued is they're just cheaper versions of the 5700 XT is what everybody figured out, and they bought them all up and flashed them and, you know, same old problems AMD's had for literally ever. So uh, it's not a surprise that they're getting harder and harder to find. Uh, you can find some on a website called ProVantage. I think there's 130 left. They're going fast though. So maybe if you want to pick up some 5700s. Alternatively, you could just pick up a 5700 XT, which is not that much more expensive and get it from a large retailer like Amazon. Link will be in the description below. This particular model is the XFX RAW 2 Ultra version. And let's dive into some specifications. It is a bus type of PCI Express 4. 4.0. So if you're going to game on this as well, uh, you know, that PCIe 4.0 support is welcome. Base clock is 1730 megahertz with a game clock of 1870 megahertz. It does boost up to 1980 megahertz and I have seen it hit that here and there depending on the luck of the draw. There's a lot of lottery in this particular model. I don't know if it's just the gigabyte or what, but we'll kind of go into that after we finish the specs. Stream processors, 2560, a memory bus of 256 bit with a clock of 14 gigabits per second and a memory size of eight gigabytes, that being GDDR6. Now let's talk about the card profile. We have a two fan design with a 2.9 slot thickness, which means you are going to cover a lot of body buy one slots if you are mounting it directly onto the motherboard. It will however still fit with two cards in a standard motherboard full PCIe um, by 16 slots. So if you're doing a multi GPU setup, they will fit, but they're going to be butted up right next to each other, uh, like right next to each other. Um, so just keep that in mind and the card that is on the inside will definitely get hotter. We had two mounted and we did notice that that was the case. It's not going to prevent it from performing at its max though. So, you know, you could still do a dual, a dual card little mining rig and get that going with these if you wanted to or were so inclined. The power requirements is going to be an eight pin adapter and a six pin adapter. So you are going to be kind of taking up a lot more space there. And depending on the algo, you are running uh, a single card's minimum power requirement, they say, is 600 watt power supply. Um, obviously with mining, that's not quite the case. Um, but you can see this card start sucking up quite a bit, pow quite a bit of power. Um, in these algorithms and we'll kind of go over that when we start testing them. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the lottery. You do have Micron and you do have Samsung memory in these. Out of the five cards we've gotten so far with two more coming in on Monday, uh, we've rolled three Sammies and two Microns. Now here's the extra interesting part about that is if we take a look at the hash rates on these, the micron is kind of the we have one micron that's performing on the level of the samsung memory and we have one that's not right so uh all the samsung memories are performing around 56 mega hash a second uh, we have one with micron that's performing around 56 mega hash a second and one with micron that's only around 52 to 53 mega hash a second and the microns require a lot more power. So I'll show you guys a screenshot of my Hive OS here, but on the Samsung memories, we are hitting around 85 to 90 watts a piece. As soon as we flip over to that micron memory, we end up being around 120 watts. Um, and these are all using the same VBIOS, which was the updated performance update BIOS from X, XFX's website, which we'll be going over in another video, and then memory strapped. So we modded that BIOS to strap the memory all to 22 CAS latency, which will also be in another video that you guys can check out. And this is what we're seeing. So if, and we're gonna be kind of looking at this, 
um, here. Uh, I will be at least because I'm trying to figure out uh, what to do with these cards. I may be pulling out the Microns and trying to return them and then trying to get some Samsung models. It's really up in the air, but you are talking about a power consumption difference of like 40 watts, which is quite a bit. I mean, it's 30 to 40, right? But that's a huge difference between Samsung and Micron. And the Micron memory, if rolled right, you know, if you get lucky, is going to hash at the same rate as the Samsung, but it's not going to hash, um, it's not gonna hash at the same rate using the same power consumption. So. Those are all the caveats there, and I think they're very important to know. But without further ado, let's get into base hash rates and then check back. Make sure you hit the notification bell down below to check back for the overclocking and particulars on all of these. So without further ado, hash rates. Starting things off with Aon. We had 234.7 solutions a second at 191 watts. With this, it doesn't come out too profitable. So you're talking about a daily revenue of 51 cents a day and your estimated rewards of four and a half Aeon per day. All right, so next we have Beam with 27.7 solutions a second at 211 watts. And with that, you would come out to getting some revenue on a standard power consumption cost or kilowatt per hour of 11 cents per hour, which should be around the national average. Of course, it depends on where you live. Uh, that aside, the more basics, you're gonna have a revenue of 91 cents a day at this time with 3.25 beam mined every 24 hours. Finally, we have the fun one that we kind of already went over in the beginning, but it is going to be Ethereum. Now, Ethereum, right off the bat, with the Samsung modules, we're hitting 53 mega hash a second. Pretty awesome stuff there with a power consumption of 199 watts total on the board. That being said, once we tweaked it, it got a little bit better or a lot better. And once you strap the memory timings, you're up there in the 56 mega hash. Uh, on the Micron models, you're gonna be sitting more around 48 to 50 mega hash a second at the same power consumption, if not more. And when you strap the memory timings, you'll be somewhere between 53 mega hash and 56 mega hash um, at, like we mentioned before, a higher power consumption. That will still get you profit though. And so our daily profit would be after power cost $1.26. Um, revenue would be $1.74 in USD and that would net you 0 0.005 Ethereum every 24 hours. Next we have Grin and on Grin we are at 0.23 graphs a second at 228 watts. It does not come out to profitable at the current average kilowatt per hour cost, but you would have a revenue of 49 cents a day with the grin being mined of 1.6 a day. Next we have Haven, and with Haven here, we had about 1195 hash a second. I think we started getting Haven locked in, by the way. We're starting to understand it a little bit better. Uh, what it needs overclocking wise and config file wise. That being said, it used 175 watts. And for Haven, you would come out profitable with 23 cents a day, uh, daily revenue of $1.02, and you would get about a third of a Haven coin per day. Next, we have Monero. And like I said, we like to test Monero, but with Monero, it's kind of one of those things that's a little bit more difficult to test with on GPUs. I don't recommend mining it, but for s and gigs, we have 913.9 uh, hash a second at 211 watts reported. The Monero would get you not profitable. You'd only make a revenue of seven cents a day and you make like 
0.0008 Monero per day. So really not worth it. Stick to CPUs on that algorithm. Next we have Raven. And for Raven, we are sitting at about 19.52 mega hash a second. Um, and that was at 210 watts. Now with this for Raven, we had a profit of 50 cents after power cost with the daily revenue of 98 cents. And that would reward you about 64 Raven every 24 hours. Next one of my favorites is Ryo. And with Ryo, we are sitting at about 2,038.7 hash a second. This is another one we're starting to really get dialed in and understand. So these are probably ones that we're gonna be going over uh, how to videos for. But that being said, 211 watts and profitable with a revenue of 63 cents a day after power costs and before that a dollar 11 a day and we are coming out with about 92 ryo per day moving on to z coin we had an average hash rate of 3.5 mega hash a second and that was at 210 watts with this we were profitable at 29 cents a day after after power costs or a dollar one revenue with getting about a quarter a quarter z coin every 24 hours last but not least is zell hash where we had anywhere between 37 and 40 solutions a second and that was at 210 watts and with that we were not profitable but we had a revenue of 82 cents a day and mining about 29 zell uh, per day so what did we learned today we learned that you still probably just want to be mining ethereum but that aside uh there's a couple that like stand out to me which would be ryo and raven uh you could be hedging on those which would be pretty cool uh, we also learned that there is a huge difference between Samsung memory and Micron memory on these little bastards. And if you can get yourself a kind of pattern to go ahead and start swapping out maybe for some GPUs that have Samsung memory, that's what I would do. That's what I would do. And that's what we're going to try to do. So. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscription down below. Hit the notification bell. We have more mining content coming for you here shortly. And I will see you next Tuesday.